Gut health, diabetes, and obesity. What is the connection? That is what I'm going to review today. Thank you for joining me. I'm Dr. Z. I'm known as the brain guy. But we have to stop separating the body into individual pieces. So in order to best help people, we've really got to connect it. And you should be doing the same thing with your health. And once again, today we are going to dive into gut microbiome how that contributes to diabetes and inflammation and if it goes wrong. So let's start reviewing what does the research show? All right. So this research paper published in 2020 gut microbiota as a trigger for metabolic inflammation in obesity and type two diabetes. Um, you know, ultimately the gut bacteria right? We've got a ton of bacteria. They have essential jobs that they should be performing. When they don't perform their jobs right, or they've been altered in a way, so you don't have the right composition, this can set you up for many different things, including obesity and diabetes. So one of the things is, you know, they say, hey, it becomes progressively clear that type two diabetes is characterized by a chronic state of low grade inflammation. Now, a lot of people come in and say, well, I feel I'm inflamed. And it's like, well, where do you feel you're inflamed? Well, it could be my joints. It could be in bloating. It could be, you know, just brain fog. I just feel off. Now, whenever we talk about inflammation, inflammation doesn't have to be visible swelling. Whenever we think about like, oh, well, I have an ankle injury and it's swollen, right? Like visible swelling, you can see. But with low grade inflammation, this is something that's persisting and changing within the body, but it's not something that necessarily everyone senses. And it's why we usually wait so long with our health to get help because we're waiting for that inflammation to simmer for a long time. And that ultimately creates issues. Now, here's a schematic from this research paper where it's looking at the interplay between gut microbiome, the glucose metabolism, and the immune system. Because remember, the body works as an entire unit. So if you alter one thing, you do have the ability of altering something else. So we see here, right? The gut microbiome plays a role in helping with the immune system. The immune system has a role of altering the gut microbiome and the integrity of it. Glucose metabolism. You need proper glucose metabolism to have a properly functioning immune system. Same time, if your immune system's off, you can drive insulin resistance, beta cell dysfunction. So beta cells are what's in the pancreas that produce insulin. Um, also your gut microbiome, right? Helps with modulating activities through their byproducts of what they break down. Also, when your glucose goes high, you now have an alteration of your gut microbiome um, and you cause a leaky gut. So I really want you to see that we have to look at things as a whole unit. The days of going to someone and they're like, hey, I'm the gut expert or I'm the brain expert. That's all I do. It doesn't work. It keeps a lot of people stuck. It works great for surgeries. Okay? It works fantastic for surgeries. But outside of that, if you're dealing with chronic health issues and you want to get better, but you're finding someone that's just that expert. You can't be a true gut expert if you don't understand how the immune system, how blood sugar is playing in to alter that. Because, I mean, how else is it possible, right? Like you don't even understand the whole story, but yet you're an expert. No, that, that doesn't work. You know, that's more of being like football and say, hey, you've got the head coach who understands how everything has to work together, but then you've got a position coach, right? Let's say the running back coach who may not really understand much at all about the defense or even the rest of the offense for that matter, right? They're good for that little thing, but they can't tie everything together. And with chronic issues, you need to tie things together. And that's what we see with obesity. That's what we see with type two diabetes and many other things. These are chronic issues. Now, as mentioned at the beginning, gut microbiome, obesity, and type 2 diabetes. So this is a diagram on obesity. So when we look at lean versus we look at obese. 
So we have symbiosis, which means the bacteria are working appropriately with the cells in our body versus dysbiosis, which means we have altered compositions. Um, in a healthy gut, you are going to control the bad guys. Unhealthy, you're not. Butyrate, so short chain fatty acids. These are fatty acids that are broken, um, that are made by our gut through the foods we eat. Now, butyrate is one of the most important short chain fatty acids we have. Guess what? Should have good levels versus not. Um, good energy usage versus not. Appropriate immune response versus immune. Anti-inflammatory versus pro-inflammatory. Good intestinal barrier function versus leaky gut. So as you can see, hey, there's a lot of things that are going on and, you know, we've got to address it for what it is. If someone's carrying extra weight, they are going to have that, which is why it's so important to get things improving to a better spot. And it's also why it's so hard because you think, well, I just have weight I need to lose, which is true. But when we go back here and we look, if you have a pro-inflammatory response, you have an impaired energy, you've got dysbiosis and other things like that, that's seen in obesity, sometimes changing your diet and exercising while that's critically important may not be enough for you. And that's okay. So I don't want you to feel as if you're failing um, because it's, it's more complex than that. Now going into those short chain fatty acids a little bit more, short chain fatty acids can help with regulation of appetite, improving insulin resistance in muscle and fat tissue, which is the adipose here. Um, now, some of these do different things, right? So butyrate, for example, which is one of my favorites, promotes epithelial integrity. So that's going to be your intestinal lining, anti-inflammatory, and then helps to regulate part of your immune system. Okay. So ultimately, this is critically important. Butyrate producing bacteria are less abundant in fecal microbiota of those with type 2 diabetes. So this may have deleterious effects on intestinal immune system function. Fiber intake is associated with decreased risk of metabolic diseases via increased short chain fatty acid production. So, you know, when you have a banana, for example, those that are on the green side more compared to yellow are going to have more of that fiber. Also good prebiotic foods, onions, you know, asparagus, anything pickled is going to be able to help on that side. But sometimes you've also got to do prebiotics to help get the bacteria to where it should be. You can also take just pure butyrate supplements, um, but there is more to the story than that. Now, the other one I want to talk about is trimethylamine and oxide, known as TMAO. How many of you have had this test performed before? Now, for most of you, the answer is probably no, you've never even heard of this test. Well, this is a test that I run on every single patient that's got diabetes, hypertension, any risk of cardiovascular disease, strokes, dementias, Parkinson's, anything like that. Now, the reason why is TMO has been linked with vascular inflammation due to NLRP3. What this basically means, it's, it's an inflammatory factor. And it's linked with atherosclerosis with plaque, which means cardiovascular disease, heart failure, and those with higher levels of TMAO. Now, ultimately, your gut microbiome does play a really big role in TMAO, and the foods you eat are going to impact as well. But what they're saying in here is, is that only related to cardiovascular or is there maybe even a bigger role? Changes with, an imp with TMO coming down, um, improvement in fasting insulin and insulin resistance and overweight and obesity. So the better the TMAO was, the better off someone is. Link between dietary fat increase and TMAO. Increase in TMAO was related to lower improvements concerning glucose tolerance. Um, so getting TMO levels down is really important. Now, not everyone that has dietary fats is going to have elevated TMO. Now, when we say dietary fats, these can be eggs, red fish, and red meat.
but this is a test that can be performed. It's a blood work. So in order to figure out exactly what you need, um, there's testing that can be done so you don't have to guess and you can go at it and being as specific as possible. There's also been research over the past year that saw progression of Parkinson's disease based upon TMAO levels because there is a lot of inflammation. So what are your thoughts? You know, what have you learned? Gut microbiota as a trigger for metabolic inflammation and obesity and type 2 diabetes. You know, really good research paper. If you want to dig in more, you definitely can. What questions, what comments do you have? And as always, our body works as a whole unit. The better we understand how it works together, the more specific of a treatment plan that you can get to help you get to where you want to be. Until the next time, this is Dr. Z.